Hi, I'm Claire Milliken and welcome to episode 172 of Art This Week. In this week's episode, the artist Nathan Green walks us through his studio. Now for Art This Week. I've been here for four months and when I, I started I was for the most part just making paintings, using paint, the material. and. Um, I have slowly been transitioning to um, kind of branch out and use other, other materials and almost arranging objects in a way that sort of talk the language of abstract painting without actually like being the material of paint. So um, this was just like shower or towel rack bars with um, all the different like sort of samples from Home Depot. and. Um, the idea for this was just to make like a simple kind of line drawing using this material that um, for me made me um, look at those objects in a different way, like see them in a different uh, sort of light. I chose to use these wooden samples, um, number one, because they're free and they're plentiful at Home Depot. But then um, secondly, you know, the material that I'm working on often is like building uh, w w uh, wooden panels. So. Uh, oftentimes in a lot of the works I will sort of reference um, the, the sort of behind structure of the material in the front and um, I don't know sort of turn the materials in on their heads. So this was um, an example of me sort of rethinking what these samples could, how they could configure. Sometimes I'll be walking in a dollar store or a Michael's craft store or Hobby Lobby or Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and a certain material will like really um, speak to me and I'll immediately get an idea for it like um, for example like the this painting here was um, just a number of these sticks that had this kind of interesting shape. I later found out that it was for um, like corrugated sheet metal so that it'll sit flat. But um, when I saw this material I immediately thought you know how interesting that you could paint it one singular color and then you get all these different tones and variations from it. So um, that's, that's kind of an example of me seeing a material and knowing what to do with it. Other times I just collect as many inexpensive things or kind of colorful things that I can and bring them in the studio and then there's a big um, you know all the stuff gets mixed around so scraps of um, you know pieces of wood that I was using to build panels with or paintings that weren't successful were chopped up into smaller pieces or stained canvas is repurposed and wrapped around something or um, for the most part I try to sort of beef up the materials that are around me and always be surrounded by them so that um, I don't know, it's almost a way that I can encourage unexpected relationships to happen. It's kind of rare that I s title pieces as I'm working on them. Um, I usually work in a way that um, there's like 10 to 15 things going at once. So I'm jumping from piece to piece and the works are um, at times cross-pollinating and talking to one another in interesting ways. Sometimes when I'm stuck, I'll take a work that I'm not sure what to do and I'll just kind of move its neighbors around to see what sort of happens. But in working that way, I almost don't think about these things as individual when they're in the process of being made. I think after they're resolved, I try to find a way to describe what they are with words. But for the most part, um, it's such like an intuitive and like visual thing that I'm doing when I'm making these that um, titles usually come very last. So one of the things that I've been working on um, while I've been at Central Track is this idea of like the painting as the object. So really treating these things that hold these images um, as like, you know, real forms like in, you know, all dimensions. Um, and I think this was like an example of one of the first ones where I completed a painting and then as opposed to like collaging or adding on, like I, my practice usually I have this tendency of just like, um, and like adding and adding and adding and adding and oftentimes like I'll ruin paintings or like go too far. And so 
this was a way for me to continue to work on the piece without covering up anything. So I just like cut a semicircle out of here, cut a semicircle out of there. They aren't exactly the same size and then switched them. So this idea of like taking this image and really like manipulating all of its, um, you know, all of its dimensions, like being able to use a jigsaw as like an art making tool as well as like a pen and a pencil and a paintbrush. And um, the same thing with this actually, this started from this, which was just like a straight up painting. So it was like a, just a painting of like these line gradients that would just like shift colors. And it sort of played with the idea of like perspective, like the lines get smaller and supposedly further away as like it goes up. And um, with that work, like that was kind of one of the first times that I really just wanted to do like a, an in, internal like rotation and see how that would affect the painting. And I was like, you know, pretty excited by the outcome of it. I guess like today I probably looked at um, Albert Olin's work, uh, who's a German painter. Rachel Harrison is an American sculptor. Isa Ginskin is a German sculptor and painter and um, installation artist. And um, I don't know, I was thinking about Jonathan Lasker today. Um, I really try to look at as much as I can. Uh, and that means like browsing um, the internet as often as I can while I'm working and like flipping through books. Um, so just for the most part, the, the studio was like covered with stuff, whether it be materials that have found their way in or books that I'm looking at or there are certain tumblers that I check out every once in a while. I really try to make sure that like I'm looking at um, just a ton of stuff to, you know, for inspiration. Another kind of mode that I've been making work in is sort of like using this hardware. And this is again from walking around hardware stores or, you know, getting stuff from Habitat for Humanity, but um, trying to use these objects that are designed to make, uh, I mean, that are designed with a purpose and that purpose is not only aesthetic and trying to take these objects that have um, this sort of like embedded, uh, I don't know, purpose and repurposing that, like not using for the thing that it's made for. So like, for example, these hinges were taken off of um, something I ended up having like throw away like this, all this fencing and those shapes seemed really interesting. They seemed to play off this pegboard and it was just a matter of shuffling the stuff around in my studio where I, um, you know, wanted to do this simple treatment where the hardware is spray painted from white to black and the board under it is spray painted from black to white. And so there's this kind of interesting push pull that happens in the picture plane. From there, then I jumped uh, to this work and that was like incorporating more colors. And so it was trying to make like an object out of these L brackets. And um, I was like looking at several sort of like impressionist paintings, just picking out colors that maybe could make sense like for a horizon line and for a sky and for the object and the same deal with um, sort of this like fade like I think I am drawn to the spray painted fade because I oftentimes like when I'm bored I've got um, my like cell phone out and I'll have like a application that's a drawing application and so it makes these really distinctly digital images and um, I get excited by trying to emulate those really digital images with like a super analog and physical uh, set of materials and tools. And then from the hardware work, uh, these works sort of happened and these were the most, some of the most like physical things that I have done to date and it was using two by twos and two by fours um, and this sort of like rough hardware to um, create these works that uh, were the support structure, but also this like really sort of objectified thing that 
an action sits on top of. So when I was making these, I was thinking like, this is the brush stroke, you know, this is like the action and then this is sort of the backdrop for the action. And um, with both of these, it was a really modular way of working. Like, um, I probably made 20 different configurations with all those pieces of wood. So that's a pretty common thing in my practice is to have these modular things that I can shift around until I find that there's something um, that represents um, or just becomes an idea to me. And I think um, the idea with these things are just taking these kind of everyday materials that you would see and transforming them and applying like the language of abstract painting onto them. I'm influenced by a diverse array of things. I'm always searching. Um, I mean, quilting is actually, that's funny. Quilting is actually a thing that is super influencing these sort of like two by four and hardware store material works. And it's this idea of like all these small scraps coming together and making this like big, bigger image. And so um, in a sense, that has been one influence. But I think my main motivation for all the work is uh, to surprise myself with a use of material or color or texture or form that um, it's just using something in a way that I have uh, have never really like conceived of it being used before so um, I think that's where like the diverse sense of the work comes from and that's where my interest is. Uh. We want to thank Nathan for speaking with us. More information on him can be found at nathangreenart.com. We filmed these videos during his residency at Central Track. More information on Central Track can be found at centraltrack.com. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. Still got your Polaroid The thought of you I can't avoid Sitting